Uh, hello everyone, welcome back. This episode here on uh, Bitcoin Trade. Um, doing the, another chart analysis here. So, <clears throat> uh, this is, uh, let me see here, I'll start with the uh, Bitstamp, I guess. So this is Bitstamp, 6 hour, and um, it pretty much did get down to um, about 420, about this line here, 400. Uh, didn't touch it, but if, if you had your limits at 420, uh, it definitely hit. So, um, I think that's a pretty good buy. So this is uh, some lines that I drew up. Uh, I have to redraw them sometimes because I uh, restart my computer. But uh, basically every time I draw them, I try to draw them the same or if I see something new. But this is pretty much what I got. And um, looks like it's kind of following this channel, broken down a little bit. It stopped at this support here. And we'll see how long um, or how good this support is. It may bounce here for a while, go up and bounce. It may range just in this part right here between these, this line right here and this line right here. So we'll see what happens. But I think that's what it's probably going to do, bounce up and down between these two price ranges, which isn't too bad because what is that price range? Um, 400 to 525, somewhere around there. So $125 uh, range. That's not bad. It's pretty good uh, to work with. Let's go on to uh, Bitsy real quick. Bitsy 6 hour, very similar. The only difference is it actually made a low here of 410. Um, if you actually had a limit here around 420, um, it definitely hit for sure. And it's kind of around that range now, a little bit, well, a little bit better. If you did have it at 420, if you had it below that, then good for you. But it's probably the same thing. I, I'm thinking it's going to bounce around these two ranges here. So that's that's that. And then uh, Bitfin here. And the, the, when I drew out the lines, uh, it came out a little different. This is kind of what I got. Um, but anyways, um, not quite 420, a little bit below. But if you were at 420, it did hit. And then this is where you're at right now, just bouncing around here. And like, I th same thing. I think it's going to bounce between these two ranges here. But if this has a lar larger range, um, then again, you know, uh, Bitfin has a lot of, a lot of, a lot of different things. Um, they have stops and limits, um, market orders. They have trailing stops. Uh, they do a lot of other margin trading. So it's going to be more volatile. I think it's going to be more volatile. So ideally a trader's dream, you know. So and then uh, Coinbase, this is the lines that I got set up against 6 hour on Coinbase right here. And you notice that they have no information whatsoever. They'll let you know what someone's buying or selling and then no volume. So but pretty much followed this channel pretty darn well and it's kind of following this channel again and then here's the support there if anybody bought at this price range um, I think it's a pretty good buy and again and again it's gonna range it looks like it's gonna bounce up and down between these two for a while until it until this comes down further and closer and closer where it can just break out and then um, I'm not sure if you're gonna see if whenever it breaks out of this hard line here I'm not sure if it's gonna you know, take off, or it's just going to be an, back to an uptrend, but on a more sustainable uptrend, um, then it'll just slowly go back down to a downtrend until, I don't know when, you know, until that time again when there's, there's, um, I guess for whatever reason, the price goes up. Either demand goes up or... Um, I guess one or two things uh, mining bitcoins becomes harder and harder as time goes on so you know those two things are 
designed to drive up the price, so to speak. So, will that happen? I don't know. Anyways, there's my quick chart analysis. I do have another one here. I'll go over some of these here. Um, and this, uh, if you notice it's red, that means it's probably trending down. But, but before I do that, um, let me go over a little article here that I found here. And it really pertains to a lot of things I do because guess what I'm I'm in Texas so so this is gonna be a big huge um, thing for me so Coindesk kinda where I get my Bitcoin news um, and they seem to provide pretty good information and so this kinda came out but I, I kinda already knew that this would come out this way because um, I had someone uh, actually look into it here for Texas and uh, basically you know this is kinda what the information that he was given for the most part which seemed to fall in line to a lot of the other uh, federal guidelines came out but a little different and, and if you follow the link this is this is it right here and Texas Department of Banking Supervisory Memorandum 1037. Anyways, that's that's the date when it came out. To all virtual currency companies operating or desiring to operate in Texas, and uh, for the most part, uh, I guess you got to read you got to read this if you're going to really trade in Bitcoin, but. Uh, what I got out of it was that <clears throat> if you wish to engage in um, buying and selling bitcoins, um, you can, I guess, for the most part. It doesn't mention anything about investors, um, but I'm assuming that um, investors are treated the same way as um, the federal guidelines uh, because it doesn't mention anything about investors specifically it just talks about what Bitcoin is and why it's not considered even money here in Texas it's not even considered anything really um, uh, but they really care about is is the actual legal tender that's how it's handled um, doesn't talk about it in a way it's handled for investors or personal it doesn't really mention anything like that it just meant makes a quick a quick reference to it and then um, that's about it but it looks like they're addressing mainly exchange companies um, sounds like they're doing it for they're talking specifically about um, companies that are trying to do this um, as a third party uh, versus, uh, you know, two people directly interacting. So, but at the same time, it's still good to know, good to read. And uh, I have to tell you, uh, you know, the, I, I live here in Texas, specifically in Houston. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I have to admit, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a native Texan, but, but I'm... But I moved to Texas, and I actually like a lot of a lot of the things uh, Texas has going on myself. Um, I almost feel like um, trading bitcoins in in Texas is very safe to do versus uh, let's say if I went to New York and traded bitcoins or I went to Florida and traded bitcoins. I don't feel as, as I wouldn't say as free, but I wouldn't. I feel safer trading here in in uh, my home state um, versus trading. I mean, anywhere it could be your home state. You just have to move and live there for a while, and then you know maybe even buy a house and claim that as your main residence. So, um, but you know, a lot of things about Texas is, in my opinion, is that. It's pretty, very independent. Um, 
it seems like if, if you're an adult and uh, you understand the risk involved in investing, um, you know, they, they allow it here. Um, reminds me a lot of the, uh, now I'm not a, I wasn't from here, so I had to learn a lot about, about Texas and, and a lot of, a lot of big things in Texas is oil. And so I had to learn a lot about energy, oil, natural gas, stuff like that, uh, electricity. Um, so my point is, uh, people investing or taking chances on investing or or uh, speculating or prospecting another one um, because people um, do uh, what it's called wild it's a little history I learned from from just being in in Texas and in and Houston is a wildcat where people go out with their own money and try to find oil you know in Texas I don't know if they do that anymore, but but you know that's an interesting business. Um, matter of fact, I went to the museum around in Houston, and they got a little little history of uh, of uh, going out and finding oil around here, uh, um, and the whole I guess uh, refining of of oil. There's a little museum, uh, natural science, so uh, a lot of different things, but. But I'm, oops, sorry. Um, but I'm pretty glad I, I live in Texas, actually. They're doing a lot, a lot of different things. So if you're in Texas, um, I think it's pretty safe as an individual to go out and just go ahead. And you want to, if you willfully want to trade Bitcoins, you can. Uh, just try to understand what you're, what you're getting into. Um, if anybody out there wants to trade bitcoins or wants to start an exchange company out here uh, read this and I think for the most part if you're trading just bitcoins with no money uh, you could probably do anything you want but but what they want to handle or or what you uh, what they're really looking out for is the money that's handled um, so you probably still have to register as a money transmitter or money uh, service business. Um, but for individuals, I, th I think you're all in the clear. Um, I'm pretty sure you're in the clear because I've kind of been doing some of these things. And um, no one's come to uh, arrest me yet. So anyways, that concludes this episode here. A uh, lot, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, just, just to get an idea of what, what's going on. Let me click on this and look it's already updating on, on different things um, what's kind of funny is my my tax guy and and my attorney are both emailing me about hey I saw this article on Bitcoin I want to share it with you I was like wow I already kind of already know all that but it's nice to know they think about me so anyways let's go back to um, this chart right here okay so I'll just go over the different ones. This is on Bitsy. A lot of things I do is just five day for a short term and weighted average 10 and 25 and it kind of helps. Let me refresh it. So so this is the drop in the balance and that's about the 420 area. That's actually what uh, 6, 4, 410. Um, I mentioned 420 is a good limit order and so it kind of had the bounce and you can see the two averages weighted average crossover but it's coming back down again and uh, it may bounce if it does bounce then there's a good chance it'll go back up if it doesn't bounce up and continues to fall then we're, we're going back on a obviously on a downtrend and then Let's see here. Let's do bit stamp. Okay, bit stamp right here. And uh, yeah, it's doing the same thing except in this one, because it's weighted, it hasn't. Oh, you know, it's it's actually crossed over. Sometimes one will be a slightly different than the other, 
I like to see them on most of them. That way it's kind of kind of confirmed. And this is a uh, Bitfin. And Bitfin is also doing the same thing. And it's actually crossed over. So it's crossing over down this way, but then again, it it, it may just do that like right around here it may do this and it kind of popped up and then slammed back down. So you got to be careful of those. Um, but again, if you if you bought in around uh, four four twenty on your limit order, which was pretty darn close, um, it may be a good hold because it at least I view the potential of going up is more than the potential of going down, in my opinion. But I could I could be wrong, all right. So and then finally we'll just look at this. Alright, so if, if you just looked at this, you would just know uh, it's been going down and it's kind of on a downtrend. So that's a good indication if you see this being red. But eventually, you know, 30 day average will come down and it will go back up. So um, you just have to be patient and wait. Anyways, let's conclude this on the. Uh, bit stamp chart and all right uh, if you have any I, I guess this is the end uh, like dislike comment or uh, even do a video response until next time uh, stay tuned bye now